Hi, I'm Jordan Klevinoff. I'm an OBGYN resident at Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm here with my co-residents, Katie Garfield and Megan Madrigal, and we're going to talk about postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage is divided into both primary and secondary hemorrhage. Primary occurs in the first 24 hours after delivery. Secondary hemorrhage is 24 hours to within 12 weeks postpartum. We define postpartum hemorrhage as more than 500 mLs of blood loss after a vaginal delivery, more than 1,000 mLs of blood loss after a C-section. So Katie has some questions for Megan and myself about hemorrhage. So when I get paged about bleeding on the labor and delivery floor, I like to try to think of all the possible causes. So what differential do you come up with? Good question. So I think it's important to remember that the leading differential is uterine acne, although it is important to remember that there can be multiple causes in a single patient. What if you don't think it's uterine acne? If you don't think that the bleeding is due to acne, there are other things to consider. It's important to remember there could be perineal or cervical lacerations that you need to assess for. You could also have retained product of conception, so in that setting, an ultrasound would be very useful. Other things that are less likely would be if the patient developed a coagulopathy or if she had uterine inversion, which hopefully would be obvious on exam. I've actually never seen a uterine inversion, so what would that look like? Good question. The uterine inversion, though it's extremely rare for it to happen, usually will occur when you're going to deliver the placenta. So you'll notice that you're seeing the placenta come through the introitus, and as you're trying to remove it, you'll just see a kind of larger mass than you're normally used to with heavy, heavy bleeding. At that point, if you suspect you have a uterine inversion, you should immediately try to replace the placenta and the uterus. If I were to get paged more than 24 hours after delivery and I was worried about a secondary postpartum hemorrhage, what would I do? Good question. So secondary postpartum hemorrhage is seen in about 1% of pregnancies. Again, one of your common reasons is gonna be retained products of conception, so an ultrasound is gonna be really helpful here. Other things to consider are, does the patient have a coagulopathy that we're not aware of, or maybe that we are aware of? Is there concern for a postpartum infection that's leading to uterine acne? Um, and has there been suboptimal involution of the placental bed? All of these are things to consider at that time. So that was a really great explanation. So Katie, in thinking about this, when you're getting paged to see a patient for postpartum hemorrhage, usually it's either on the labor and delivery floor right after they delivered, or up on the postpartum floor. So when you're going to see these patients, it's important to keep this quick differential in your head. Most of the time it's gonna be acne, but things to consider would be lacerations that are unrecognized, retained products of conception, extremely unlikely coagulopathy, and possibly a uterine inversion. This kind of takes us into our next topic where we'll talk about in our next video the initial management when you step in the room of a postpartum hemorrhage. Such as an infection with poor sub-involution of the placenta. <laughs> I honestly forget what else I'm supposed to say. I've actually never seen a uterine inversion, so what would that look like? Oh, I'm sorry for assuming that you... <laughs> God damn! So, uterine inversion, although it's extremely rare, usually will... <laughs> sorry, the chair, it sounded like a fart. Action. Oh my god, that's such a good question. 